Hey, welcome back to this mini lecture. My name is Dino. It's a exploration of Nicholas Carr's article as Google making a stupid and the provocative title is Rise of the Pancake People. Uh, the focus is on networks informa network information's impact on people in the context of uh, Nicholas Carr's uh, article is Google making a stupid and I'll, I'll write some provocative questions to leave with you to consider as you go about your merry day. Uh, the idea that our minds should operate as high-speed data processing machines is not only built into the workings of the internet, it is the network's reigning business model as well. The faster we surf across the web, the more opportunities Google and other companies gain to collect information about us and defeat us advertisements. Um, I wonder, friend, um, should companies be able to monitor and sell our clicks? Should that be a prevailing business model that we acquiesce to? If not, should we push back? If so, how? Do we need to organize? Do we need to have regulation? Uh, do we need to lobby against the platforms who do this? This is a uh, long quote from play the playwright Richard Foreman. Quote, I come from a tradition of Western culture in which the ideal was a complex, dense, and cathedral-like structure of the highly educated and articulate personality. A man or woman who carried inside themselves a personally constructed and unique version of the entire heritage of the West. <laughs> But now I see within us all, myself included, the replacement of complex inner density with a new kind of self, evolving in the pressure of information overload and the technology of the, uh, the instantly available. Um, I wonder, do you think it's still possible to become highly educated in an articulate personality today? Is it uh, more along what um, um, Foreman was saying? Can you become a unique, personally constructed person today? Or are we just too bombarded by outside forces? What is the long-term impact of information and overload and instantly available information? Are we so consumed by this deluge of information that, again, being unique and personally constructed becomes really, really difficult? More from playwright Richard Foreman. As, as we are drained of our inner rep repertory of dense cultural inheritance, we risk turning into pancake people spread wide and thin as we connect with that vast network of information accessed by the mere touch of a button. Are we already pancake people today? As information becomes even more widely spread, even faster, as we're bombarded in more and more ways. You know, before there was a time, before laptops, before tablets, before phones, what technology? Oh, well, now we have watches. What's coming down the pipe that's going to make us spread even more wide and thin? If this is, if you think this is a bad thing, how do we stop it? Are we even able to? Uh, this is a sort of quote. It's a reflection on uh, Stanley Kubrick's masterpiece, uh, 2001: A Space Odyssey. In the world of the film 2001, people have become so machine-like that the most human character turns out to be a machine. That's the essence of Kubrick's dark prophecy. As we come to rely on computers to mediate our understanding of the world, it is our own intelligence that flattens into artificial intelligence. What is the meaning of what, uh, what Nicholas Carr writes here? Uh, what do you think of artificial intelligence, clockwork, uh, clockwork uh, and computer becoming metaphors for the way that we interact with each other how how our, our human intelligence goes to become the fodder for uh, artificial intelligence, how we're expected to work like clock, uh, clockwork and our machine and our brains and the way that we work are becoming more like computers. What do these metaphors do to us? Here's some final considerations based on what you just saw. Uh, how do we resist becoming high-speed high speed data processing machines? Is that kind of an inevitable as, we, as our lives intermingle, interchange, and interact with technology? How do we push back against lies becoming advertising fodder? Is that just what, how our future is going to be? Uh, can we become highly educated and articulate people uh, today, as, as Richard Foreman wants us to be? Can we resist becoming wide, widen, uh, spread wide and thin through technology as we're bombarded by more and more technology, more and more information in every part of our lives? How do all these considerations impact students, teachers, and school systems? How do we foster students that are highly educated and articulate today? How do, how do we as teachers push back against a system that dehumanizes us and, and again makes us more part of machine intelligence and not human intelligence? What do school systems need to do, if anything? Do they need to, to articulate and, and, and envision new types of curriculum that pushes back? Uh, that is, is Google making a stupid rise of the pancake people? My name is Dino. Thanks for watching. Please feel free to like this video. Please feel free to comment. Do you feel uh, spread wide and thin today? 
do you think it's going to become worse in the future? Do you think all of this is, is worse for us? Do you think this will widely available information and data is good for us in, 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 uh, in, 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 in pushing back against what I just said? Um, as always, again, please feel free to comment. Uh, please feel free to like this video. And please feel free to subscribe to this channel if you want some other types of content. Thanks for watching. Take care.